Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the voice of reason. Well, today we're continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and the Ukraine. Now, today specifically, I wanted to have a conversation and an analysis about the Ukrainian force disposition that is currently operating inside the Russian Federation within the uh, Kursk area of operation, meaning Ukrainian forces that have crossed over into the Russian Federation proper. Now, obviously, the Ukrainian military is now acknowledging that active duty uh, brigades are indeed uh, operating inside the Russian Federation. I don't think for a minute anyone doubted that. And uh, as with other incursions where the Ukrainians did not admit that that, that exactly did not happen, uh, we know it, it did. Now, what units are operating in Russia right now, Ukrainian units? So what I'm going to do, I've compiled a list of brigades and elements of brigades and or independent battalions that are currently operating inside of Russia. So the first is the 61st First Mechanized Brigade, the 61st Mechanized Brigade. Now each of these brigades uh, consists of anywhere from two to uh, possibly as, as high as 3,000 troops and uh, we believe that many of these brigades that entered the Russian Federation were fairly well equipped and were, were fairly well kitted out uh, when they had entered Russia and, uh, and, and probably fairly well trained at, as well. Again, this is not an operation designed to permanently take control of territory. It is designed to draw media attention from what's happening in the South. So again, 61st Mechanized Brigade, the uh, 22nd Mechanized Brigade. So those are the two primary mechanized units that are currently operating inside of Russia. Now, there's more units as well. There is the uh, the 80th Air Assault Brigade. Now, when I am calling these brigades, uh, these are the entire brigade that is, from the information that we have, that have been deployed inside of Russia. So essentially, full three... Full three Ukrainian brigades. The 43rd Artillery Brigade, now that has not actually entered Russia. Uh, it is sitting uh, behind the border and providing uh, artillery support to those three maneuver brigades. There is also the 14th Unmanned Aviation Regiment, which has partly entered Russia while some of the other elements are still outside of the Russian Federation. There is one battalion, an independent battalion, called the 225th Assault Battalion. There is at least one battalion-sized element from the 116th Mechanized Brigade. So we believe that elements of the 116th Mechanized Brigade are reinforcing those three other Mechanized Brigades and uh, the Air Assault Brigade that is operating. And then there is a battalion-sized element of the uh, 82nd Air Assault. Now when I say Air Assault as with the 80th uh, Air Assault Brigade, these are not air assault units in the traditional sense. Uh, the Ukrainians are not operating helicopters on the Russian side of the border. These are essentially motorized infantry units that uh, actually in some cases have uh, independent tank companies or battalions assigned to those units. And then finally, there is an intelligence battalion, the Tamur Intelligence Battalion, that is also active inside the Russian Federation. So again, a total of uh, three maneuver brigades that are fully staffed, and then elements of approximately one, two, three, four uh, other major combat formations as, as well. So the grand total is most likely under 10,000 troops that have entered the Russian Federation. 
So again, uh, a far cry from the reported 14 brigades in some cases. Uh, is it a robust force? It is. It is a sizable force. It does have capabilities. Does it have the capability of uh, seizing control of Kursk, the actual city of Kursk? Uh, it does not. It does not have that capability, this, uh, this grouping of forces. So again, it is a purpose-driven public relations stunt designed to draw attention from what is happening in the South, and specifically the, uh, the collapsing of Ukrainian units that are taking place north-northwest of Donetsk and north-northwest specifically of Adivka. Again, Ukrainian units uh, in this area, both to the north and to the south of Donetsk, are in a very precarious situation. And that is why we are seeing this operation by the Ukrainians with those combat units just specified that have crossed the border into the Russian Federation. Now, we know that the Russians are striking these units day in and day out with air power and long-range artillery systems. Eventually, we will probably see a maneuver operation uh, designed to isolate and then destroy Ukrainian units that are in areas such as uh, uh, Suzha and uh, other areas in this, uh, this, uh, this haphazard salient, salient that has been uh, created by Ukrainian forces. So we're going to continue to monitor and watch what is happening on the ground. We hope uh, we provided you some insight in terms of some of the force capabilities that the Ukrainians have used in this ongoing uh, offensive. So more to come very, very soon. As always, thanks for joining us. Have a good day.